Hello and welcome to a new video for the Sail in Finland camera corner. Today we will not be talking about cameras per se, but uh, take a little bit of a deep dive into one topic around how to store the pictures and the videos that you actually take. So uh, we're going to be talking about something called a RAID, a RAID array, uh, which is a way of combining multiple disks into what looks like a single disk for the operating system and use that in order to either increase the performance of your disks or make them more reliable. So I'm going to be talking about something that is called now RAID 1 where you actually use two disks to back up each other so that it protects you against one single thing. That single thing is a single disk hardware failure. So, so you have actually on the computer if you have a RAID one array set up, uh, all the files are copied onto two different disks inside the computer, and if one disk fails, you still have, you know, the material on the other disk. It's actually important also to realize that uh, this only protects you against that one type of failure, which is sort of single disk hardware failure, which fortunately is not all that common, but extremely annoying when it happens. Uh, it doesn't protect you against a lot of other things, such as, for instance, uh, uh, you know, ransomware uh, or, or other such things. So you still need to do backups of all your files, regardless of whether you have set up a RAID 1 uh, system like I'm going to do here now in this video. Why this talk? Well, uh, because I had a really old desktop rig that I wanted to update. So, so I bought myself uh, some new components, an AMD uh, processor and an AMD X570 based motherboard from a company called Gigabyte. So I needed to take the RAID systems that I had on my old computer and wanted to move them now to the, to the new rig. So I looked at a lot of instructions on how to set up RAIDs on this X570 systems and the instructions were actually quite complex because most of the time they actually involved setting up the RAID in such a way that you could actually boot from the RAID array and that's not what I needed. I just wanted to add a couple of uh, SATA disks and uh, use those uh, for the RAID setup. So that's a, sort of a much simpler uh, challenge. These other instructions were kind of overkill, so because I didn't find any simple instructions for that, so here's my short video on how I then did that. Let's go through the steps for setting those things up, and that means actually going back to last night when I started this process, because setting up a RAID array actually takes a few hours, because it takes quite a while for the RAID array to actually initialize itself. Let's see what uh, happened last night. Let's start there. So of course the first step in, in uh, setting up the RAID is of course to install the hard disks uh, in, into the computer. So I had uh, two times three uh, terabyte old drives and a couple of newer eight terabytes. I used the three terabytes to build a three terabyte array for photos and the eight terabyte disks to build an eight terabyte array for my videos. So the first thing to do, of course, is then to get into the BIOS and make sure that we have all the right settings there. So uh, basically, uh, this is the gigabyte version of the of the BIOS. So, so in the settings section, you know, you just make, need to make sure that you have the uh, SATA mode set to RAID. And you actually can ignore then the NVMe RAID mode because that's just 1040 uh, on motherboard, new fast disks. So, so it's not for the uh, SATA disks. Uh, just to sort of be complete, at this point in time, you know, you can save and, and uh, store the setup, but uh, let's still take one more look at uh, the overall uh, setup. So you have a RAID expert uh, utility also in the RAID, but we're not going to be using it 
in, in, in this video because I think it's much easier to use the sort of the app that actually runs in Windows than to do, do the setup. Okay, so after we've set up uh, the BIOS, the next step is to make sure that we actually have uh, the right software to work with. So, so you know, you can then search for the uh, AMD uh, drivers that are required for the RAID setup. So they're here. So you can see here's uh, two setups here, just the right RAID drivers, but then there's also this sort of RAID installer. So I use this when it installs on one hand the drivers and then also the RAID expert uh, utility. So we'll, we'll pick that one up from another location as well. Okay, so now I have downloaded uh, the software package and, and here I have then two alternatives. I can either uh, install just the drivers. I've done that already, so I won't do it here. Or then I can also install then the RAID expert utility. This is one way of doing it. Uh, but there's an, another way as well that actually leaves it installed nicely on your computer. So. I'll be doing that. So just install the drivers from here. And then when you're done with that, let's go to the next step. So the next step then is to uh, go to the Microsoft Store on your Windows computer. And then on the store, you know, you can search for the RAID Expert and then you can install it here by just clicking Get. Before we're going to start the RAID installation, then just one more thing to take care of. So go into your Microsoft Windows settings uh, and then go to the power and sleep section and make sure that you have sleep set to never because when the RAID array is being uh, installed, it actually initializes and that happens somewhere deep down in the bowels of uh, firmware so windows doesn't really understand that there's something going on so it will go to sleep okay so now i have started uh the raid array uh, application as an administrator so the first thing i need to do here is to observe that if i want to start creating an array right now. It shows that there are no disks available to create a new RAID array. Why that is, is because uh, the firmware identifies the two disks that have been connected to the SATA interface. It then actually creates a sort of a single disk array for each of those. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to delete the array uh, to free up the disk so we can then actually use the disk then to create the new RAID array. So we have here array two. Let's check before we do something stupid. So this is actually then the uh, three terabyte disk. It's exactly the disk that I want to initialize the eight terabyte disks I've already set up earlier, so I don't want to touch those. So, so, so this is exactly the one that I want. So I'll just delete this array. So I'm going to delete that one as well. And now basically I just have the video array there, which is a RAID array. And now I can start creating the, the new RAID array. So I'm going to start here, create, and actually then I can choose here uh, selection is done just with by pressing space bar. So I'm, I'm uh, choosing these two and now I can create an array. I want to do a mirror. So I'm choosing that and the max capacity is the three terabytes. So I want to use that. And then basically I'm just going to call these photos, the array and now I'm starting the creation process. So create started. So now what you can see then is actually what happens here is that 
creating the array also syncs up the two disks and that's a quite a slow process so you can see there that it's it's moving here at about 170 200 megabits per second so there's a three terabyte disk so this is going to take a while so i'm going to stop the video here and then i'm going to continue probably sometimes tomorrow morning uh, see you tomorrow morning okay so welcome back now the raid initialization has gone on over the night and we can see down here that we started at about 10 o'clock last night and the three terabyte uh, volume was initialized at about 10 o'clock this morning so it took roughly 12 hours to initialize three three terabytes if you have a bigger disk of course then it will take uh, comparatively longer to to get it initialized mainly what the initialization does is it makes sure that it kind of syncs the two disks uh, that they have the same content but we're not done yet so so we can see now here we have the new array here it's set up it's the three terabyte thing but if we go into windows you know i still can't see um, this disk so i need to do one more thing and that's to actually then you know go into windows disk manager to initialize the disk and that's a fairly simple step so let's see how we do that so here we are with the disk manager and actually when i started it up it already gave me a pop-up indication that this disk number three is not initialized so i could have just started the initialization process there but uh, i cancelled that one so now we can see how to do it here so it's actually also very simple so i just go on on, on this disk and double click here and say initialize disk fairly simple uh, i'm just going to create now a simple volume here so Windows thinks that this is now a single disk because the RAID properties are actually being handled by the firmware. So, so it's to uh, Windows, this looks like a regular disk. So I'm going to uh, allocate maximum size to it. And then I'm going to allocate the letter F, which is actually exactly the letter that I wanted give it the range so this is photo and it's going to perform a quick format and this is going to create the disk that I want now we'll have to wait for a second for the initialization to go through and now we can see here we have a new disk here which is called photo and i'm actually ready now to start using the new rated uh, disk and now basically the next step is then going to be that i'm going to copy back the backup that i had taken of the disk before i started this process and then i will have all my files back on this new rig so hope you enjoyed this very short introduction to how to set up a raid array on a amd x570 rig so if you like this, you want to see some more of this, then please subscribe. And we also have a lot of interesting sailing related material here on Sail in Finland outside the camera corner. So you might want to take a look at that as well. Thanks and uh, see you next time.